Good morning, Fort Hunter Liggett, and welcome to the Suicide Prevention Month guest speaker event. My name is Jeanette McLaughlin. I am the ASAP specialist here, and we have a wonderful guest speaker with us, Miss Annette Wittenberger, who will be sharing her message of hope. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce our garrison commander, Colonel Lamb. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. We've had uh, a number of suicide prevention events, but this is our, our Super Bowl, having a guest speaker. I had an opportunity to work with Ms. Uh, Wittenberger a few months back um, for uh, when I was in my previous command for um, Mental Health Awareness Month, and it was a Zoom event uh, because being in Europe, we couldn't uh, invite anyone over, and it was it was an awesome event. We had um, a number of other guest speakers as well, and I just was so moved by her story and her journey uh, that I thought that she would be a fabulous um, addition to our Suicide Prevention Month, and I'm so honored to have her here with us today. And I just hope that everyone um, continues the conversation and use this time uh, to have some of your questions answered or find ways to help others. And I've, I've shared my uh, story a few times and I, I wear my beads for a military uh, service member that um, I lost to suicide as well as a uh, family member. So with that, I will turn it back over to Jeanette to do the formal bio and introduction. Thank you, ma'am. Annette is a military spouse of 22 years, mother and daughter to Haley, 21 years old, college senior at Sam Houston State University and son Blaze, 18 years old, college freshman at Central Texas College and a veteran who served in the Army for 17 years and four months as a chemical officer, including a deployment to Iraq and Afghanistan. Since her retirement, she has decided to focus on her business, podcast, speaking and mentoring, volunteering, and her first book, The Wall Between Two Lives. Her blog, A Wild Ride Called Life, LLC, incorporates stories from her post-military life in which she shares how she lives as being a mom, military spouse, living with PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Along with writing, she has created a safe place in which she hosts a podcast titled The Truths We Hide. Not only does she share her story, but she also has guests who share their stories by offering advice to others to help them know that they're not alone and to provide hope. Without further ado, I'd like to please Welcome to the stage, Ms. Annette Wittenberger. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I know how training can be sometimes, but I, I really am blessed to be here. I really, truly believe that God puts people, certain people in your life for a reason, and that one of them is Colonel Lamb, and I just knew that what can we do together? We kept asking each other, what more can we do to end the stigma on mental health and stop suicide? Because it's just, it's not ending. And I know for me, one of the reasons was I was, a, I was ashamed in my culture. I'm Hispanic and Peruvian. And growing up in the, in the 80s, we didn't talk about stuff like that. You know, I, I was um, a victim of sexual uh, assault when I was nine. And quickly that quickly try it wasn't covered up really I mean I went to court and I had to testify as a 10 year old but it was just you didn't broadcast that you know it wasn't on the news it wasn't talked about it it was just kept in house and I learned to become a master of suppression I suppressed that um, didn't really think it was my fault but I kept thinking what could I have done as a nine-year-old with an older man, what could I have done to have stopped him from doing that to me? And I just slowly had to black it out 
and I learned how to do that into my teen years where I started to date verbally abusive uh, men, or not men, but 16 year olds. And I thought that it was okay. I thought, well, he likes me. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Just all these crazy things as a 16 year old girl, but it wasn't okay. And I got older and I was told that women join, don't join the army. And I said, well, you know, screw that. I'm going to do it. And it was always trying to prove myself uh, to mask everything else that had gone on in my life. And then I was sexually assaulted in the military uh, more than once. And it was with a senior leader. And again, who am I going to tell? What are they going to do? Um, that was in 98. And I just learned to just keep covering it up, covering everything up that I was going on, that was going on in my life. And as many of you know, if you have all that built up uh, frustration and rage and anger, you're going to explode. And that's what happened to me later. So I retired almost five years ago. It'll be five years on one November. Um, I didn't get picked up for lieutenant colonel and I was devastated. I felt like a failure because I let the uniform and all the evaluation reports define me. I thought that whatever was on paper, that was true. I wasn't a good leader because that's what he said. But I knew that I was, you know, I, I was just trying to care for my soldiers and I had made it to 17 years. Who does that? I've sacrificed so much with my kids and being dual military, and that was hard. That's a whole other, that's a whole other story. Um, just trying to balance it all and in being a female in a male-dominated uh, world, because I was raised in field artillery, light infantry, and um, heavy. So it was always trying to fit in. I was trying to prove myself to show that I could do the job and never let them see you sweat and don't cry and you have to be strong all the time and man I was tired I was so tired that when I found out I didn't make the list I was like I who am I and when someone asked me who was a net I didn't know how to answer that because I didn't know who I was I was just a major I was just in uniform the other day but then the next, they handed me a flag and their certificate of appreciation. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I just gave all of this and I'm in my car with this. I didn't even go to my retirement ceremony. I was so embarrassed. I was ashamed. I felt like such a failure because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what to do. But six months before that, they said, you have to be out. That's it. Hurry up do the transition and you have a week long to figure out how to write a resume, how to dress, how to talk. Here are the 1500 websites you could go to. And I was like, who, you know, how, how do you take 17 years and try to compress it into six months to figure out what you're going to do with your life? I didn't know. I, I, I thought that I was going to get out. I was going to be a GS civilian. I was going to work with soldiers and I just loved it. I loved it. But I, fell into a very dark depression and everything that I had gone through in my life just fell right there. I was on the floor at two in the morning. I had called a friend from high school and I was like, I'm done. I can't do this. Not just then that I want to end my life, but when I was 16 and I was shunned by a boy, I overdosed on pills. And then in 2010, I had a gun when I was attending one of the most amazing schools for field grades, intermediate level education at Fort Leavenworth, an amazing place. I should have been so excited and so proud to be there because not everybody gets to go. But I cracked because I never knew how to deal with my depression, my anxiety and my PTSD from the deployments and all that. I didn't know how to deal with it. So I covered it up and I cracked. My husband took the gun. I think I went to a therapy session because I didn't want anybody to know. And that was it. And I just continued on with life. So in 2016, when I was no longer going to show up to formation, even though I hated getting up at five, I missed it. I missed the craziness, the meetings, the everything. I didn't have my family anymore. And I... 
I wanted to just stop the pain. She luckily she reminded me that, you know, I'm still a mom. I had kids that were looking at me. They were seeing mom handle her rage and her oh man, I was not fun to live with at all. They they but they they saw all the bad parts of me. So what was I gonna do? I kept continuing to feel sorry for myself. I ended up, you know, obviously I, I'm still here, but I still was in this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I feel sorry for myself. So I started a blog. I started to talk to some of my soldiers that I had in command with me years before, and they said, "Ma'am, transition's hard. I did. It was not easy at all, but you can do it." And so all these things started to click in my head, and I started to write. I started a WordPress account in secret because I needed some way to save me from myself. And then it eventually went into one day God said, a wild ride called life, do something with that. And I was like, oh my God, that's perfect. Okay, let's just do that. And I created a logo and it was just all these fun things, but what was I gonna do with it? I started to write, I started to post it on social media and I had backlash. People were like, right, what's wrong with you? Like, are you okay? Why are you putting this all over Facebook? And I started to second guess myself, like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. But no, because you know what? I had people reach out to me and say, thank you so much for just saying what you said for the posts that you do every day. I look forward to it. You just saved my life. And I knew then, I don't care what anybody says, the people that I lost, the friends, if I could save someone's life by just telling it how it is and not the fluff and being Instagram pretty and all these other things, then that's how it's going to be. So I continued on and then I started a podcast and I thought, who's going to listen to this? But I had people reaching out to me. Do you have to be military affiliated? Because I have a story. And so I said, let's do it. There are so many people out there that are not military that are dealing with this, right? I mean, how many of you know somebody that's suffering in silence, but you don't know how to have that conversation with them? Or, you know, you're a little afraid because they might get mad. I mean, it happens. Like, how do you approach somebody without offending them? So you have to kind of, you know, look out for the signs. I isolated myself. I started drinking. I put wine in my coffee because it doesn't even make sense. But I did because it was just a little edge that I wanted, but I thought I could handle this. I'm fierce. I'm going to work and I was an XO and it was just... Nobody knew. It was like Kahlua in your coffee. It's just wine, whatever. That's not okay. My kids thought I was an alcoholic. I did not. I said, I don't drink that much. My, my daughter just told me a few years ago, Mom, you used to drink a bottle a day. I said, no, I didn't. I had a couple of glasses. Like, Mom, you did. And my son vouched for her. And I said, oh, my God. Did I really? <laughs> That's so sad to me. Because then my kids started suffering from depression and I got so angry because I said, how can I not have seen the signs? This is not okay. I had to do something about it. I've always believed in God. I just lost my way a few times and I came back. And I used to get angry because like, why is this happening to me? Why me all the time? And then I had, I was taking my daughter to college and I got in this the most traumatic car accident ever. Nobody thought, nobody knew how we survived. I have, I broke my whole left side. I mean, I have rods, pins, needles, you name it, a new hip. I can't run anymore. I mean, I hated running, but I miss it now. It's just all these little things that you take for granted. I had no brain damage, no internal bleeding. I didn't lose an eye. I mean, it could have been so much worse, but I have these scars to remind me that God said, hello, wake up. I gave you all these chances in life and you're not hearing me. And that's how I said, my husband had to remind me. So are you going to live with this or are you going to suffer from it? And that really shook me because I said, you know what? I can't suffer anymore because I'm never going to survive. And my kids are just going to continue to see how I react to things. And when they started suffering, and my son was going through a really hard time. I had to look at them and, and say, okay, let, we need to talk. 
what, uh, what mom did before was not okay. I'm better now. This is the work that I do, and this is why I do it. And they see it. They see that I, you know, I put myself out there because if I can make it, you can make it, and we need to continue to have the conversation, even though it sucks and it's hard. And then I put it into a book because why not, right? Just I had to warn my family, look, I'm going to say some things, but this is why I'm doing it. And I said, okay, and it's hard. So, but I continue to do it because I need to spread the message of hope. And one of my soldiers had this tattoo that hope stood for hold on pain ends. And I thought that was brilliant. So I always think about that always. And a few years ago, the mantra of your message, your message. And I use that all the time because it is all my crap that I've gone through. I'm sharing it with everybody because we've all gone through something similar. We know somebody that's gone through something similar. So what are we going to do with that? We can hold it in. You know, I have friends that are not as public as me and that's OK. And they're dealing with them, but we still talk about it behind closed doors. We st at least you're talking to somebody. And I think that's one of the most important things is find your person. It's OK to get help. I mean, there's so many resources available now. It's crazy. I used to go to military one source, but I said I was going to the dentist because I didn't want anybody to know. I worked too hard for my top secret clearance. I was not going to get rid of it. I don't care. I will figure it out. But it didn't help because I, you know, I exploded. So I'm here now to just share all that, to share that I, you know, ruined my marriage and my kids are suffering and I'm not perfect. And I don't always post the prettiest things on, on social media because it's real life. It is real life that things don't always go the way you planned. I really wanted to retire at 20, but God gave me another plan. And I, you know, I shouldn't have been here three years ago, but I am. And I'm so just so blessed to be here in front of all of you because I know each one of you is doing a important work and you're here for a reason and I continue to go back to when I mentor people why are you doing what you do do you really love what you do is it your passion do what sets your soul on fire make a difference continue to wake up each day and just be grateful because you just don't know I mean with everything happening in the world it's just it's heartbreaking right so I ask each of you if you want to raise your hand or not how many of you know somebody lost somebody i forgot my beats but i did lose a soldier to suicide right after i got command we lost a family friend to suicide he left behind his son uh, i'm a suicide survivor um, my daughter thought about it and my my she also works in an all-male prison as a corrections officer so she goes through a lot of crap my brother is a search and rescue volunteer and he's lost he's seen people fall off the mountain and die he goes through things. So there's so many layers to everything that we've gone through. It's just how do we deal with it? So, you know, how do you deal with it? What do you know the signs to see? Do you know how to react? There's so much information out front. And I know some of us is like, oh, it's mundane. We see it all the time. But really pick it up and read it because you don't, you never know who needs to reach out to you and you want to be prepared to say, hey, call this hotline number. I think in what, 2024, when is it? 2022. 2022, you could just dial a number now. Yeah, so that's amazing because a lot of us don't want to call the number because we don't have to want to explain why we're calling and go through all these people. But now you just dial the number and you get it right away in EAP program and military one source and there's no profits out there who are offering resources for all of us. It's just, it's incredible. And I wish you would have had it years ago. So I ask you, do you know anybody that's suffering in silence and how, how would you react? I appreciate you guys. Um, I could stand here forever and talk about all the layers of trying to figure out how to be a military spouse without being in uniform that was that was a wreck I didn't know how to do that I mean I was a military spouse for 23 years but I didn't know how to just be the military spouse I was always a, a soldier 
And I was, you know, dual hatting it. I didn't know how to do that. And I was like, I can't, I don't know how to do this at all. And I don't, a dependent card. Oh my gosh. It was, it was hard. There's so many different things transitioning, whether it's from the military or from the corporate world, government, whatever the case is, it's hard because you're so used to doing this one job. How do you transition to something else without feeling like you failed? And we have to remember that to give ourselves grace and that we didn't fail, there's another plan for us to do the next work, the next chapter in our life. So thank you so much for listening. It's really such an honor to be here and try to make an impact. I'm going to continue it no matter how many people are hating on me because I want to, I, we need to end this and it starts with us. You know, we, we need to have that conversation. We need to continue it. We need to push it. We're losing people every day from 12 years old and up um, when we can't just ignore it. And a quick story, two years ago, my son was a sophomore, 16 years old. She took her life because she was bullied. Nobody knew because she was outgoing and she played in the band and everybody loved her and she smiled. But one day she couldn't handle it anymore because she didn't know who to tell. And the school didn't know. Nobody knew her parents. And, you know, speaking to her mom just a few days ago, she's just trying to live with, you know, raise her other sisters. And she just doesn't know what to do next. She just knows that bullying was a problem. And how are we going to stop that? And it doesn't help with social media being all kinds of crazy with TikTok and Instagram. So as I think as long as we have a conversation with our kids and tell them, hey, you know, you could come to me. Don't always go there. Not everything's true, but I'm here or hear someone to talk to, then it can make the hugest, the biggest difference in the world. So does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. My, uh, my question to you is this, you know, I just, uh, I love psychology and I study human beings and psychology. Now, you've been insulted first time you were nine years old. Now, we go a little bit further again at 16. Then you got insulted again as an adult. And you also believe in Christianity because the way you talk, I could tell. So now, when you ask yourself this question, you say to yourself, why me? I got assaulted at nine, 16, as an adult. Then you say, Lord, my relationship with you is personal. Help me out. Why me? What kind of answer did you give to yourself? I have learned within the past couple of years that it's not, it happened to me, it happened for me. That sounds kind of ugly, especially with the assaults, but I truly believe that God had a plan years now. He knew today that I was going to be able to be here to help others. What I I used to ask myself, why me? But I couldn't live like that anymore because I wasn't going to survive. So I believe I made it out for a reason. And it, I mean, it sucked being assaulted by a senior leader and by an older man. It was not something that, you know, I knew how to live with, but... Like you said, my faith, the only thing that has kept me here. Oh, and so I do, I believe he had a plan because I shouldn't be here. A dozen times over, I shouldn't be here, but I am. So it's God had a plan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I have, I have some books. If you want a free copy, I bought some, I brought some books. If there's not enough, you can always get on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we could talk and I can mail it to you. Whatever the case is, I just, I want to share it so that you knew. But thank you so much.
it's just like a flashback. I heard Kurt Smith told me that's the song. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, God is, he has you. It's, its oh my gosh. And, and I'm praying for your son. Um, all of it. Just I'm so thankful for you for being here. Any of you can reach out to me. I, I Honestly, I give out my phone number, um, my email, all of it. But I, I appreciate you for being here for God to keep, that's, he kept you here. And your son, too. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't share that, but thank you for sharing your story. Be very transparent. Uh, very powerful story. You said some things that I was too much of a girl South Carolina. You said some things that I can connect with um, that brought tears to my eyes. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, suicide is not the myth, it's a reality. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Like I said, you can reach out to me at wildridecalllife.com <laughs> or at gmail.com. And if you ever need my number, I could give you that offline as well. Um, but I'm always here for anybody, whether you want to be anonymous or not. I've had to have that happen before. Um, I'm not a licensed therapist. I do have a degree in psychology. This is all from my life experiences from mom to, you know, everything that you heard. Um, I can talk about each one of those and I'll never say I'm an expert. It's just what I've lived through. And that's what I try to share with everybody. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Major. So such an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Wittenberger. If I could please have uh, Colonel Lamb come up and just say a few closing remarks. Thank you so much. That was um, very moving and I can't tell you how much I appreciate your story of hope and um, just inspiration for others to share their their story and to reach out. I think that's the most important thing is that we reach out to someone, anyone and ask for help or someone to listen and then if you're not going through and you see someone else is, it's so important to reach out and ask, you know, are you okay? Can I, can I give you a hug? Do you need anything? Can I be a listening ear? So I, we so appreciate you today. And um, thank you from our entire command team. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've, you've just been a blessing for us, so thank you. Yeah, I'll just uh, follow up and say something very simply. It's OK to ask for help. It's OK to ask for help. Thanks again. Thank you. Oh.
So I just wanted to um, let you know some of the resources we do have. Um, again, uh, Ms. Wittenberger did speak about the employee assistance program, which is available and we continue to have that number uh, provided for you here at the back. And then always uh, we have a permanent um, Army Substance Abuse Program information table at the headquarters that you can always go to to get information. And both myself and uh, Ms. Martinez are here on post that you can reach out. Uh, we also have the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So I um, try to hand out the cards, the new ACE cards, which has that information and also warning signs. And they're at the back uh, for you all to take as well. So you can kind of get an idea of what the warning signs are uh, when it does come to suicide. Because sometimes um, they're not really apparent, like someone just donating some money. Um, might not seem like a big deal or quitting certain social groups. Um, those could be warning signs, so it could be subtle. So it's good to have those on hand for yourself or someone else. But this does conclude the Suicide Prevention Month um, guest speaker event. And I want to thank you guys all for being here and have a great rest of your day.